Uh, we're going to read about uh, the heirs coming forward according to Scripture. Um, the heirs to the covenant uh, dealing with Jesus Christ and who he died for. And opening up the covenant to all, because all were part of the covenant. It was not just for the uh, uh, nation of Israel. It was those that were adopted from the other nations that had, uh, had believed in Jesus Christ and his ransom sacrifice. And so therefore it broke down the barrier wall and all were involved, according to scripture. Uh, we're going to read out of Galatians 4 uh, for this moment. And uh, uh, we hope that uh, when, you're, when you're listening, you're listening with uh, ears to hear. And when you're watching the video with eyes to see. And uh, we will lead you into further uh, solid confirmation of your faith uh, if you uh, take the time to actually uh, bring yourself to a, a humble position before God. Uh, Galatians chapter 4 reads about the heirs that will come forward because we are all heirs. We are of heirs of the most noble inheritance, which is of God. It says, Now I say... In Galatians chapter 4, verse uh, uh, 1, and we're going to read the, uh, the majority of the chapter here. It says, Now I say that an heir, as long as he is a child, notice not an adult, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so, we, when we were children, we're in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. So notice your adoption is involved here. The majority would not be under this promise or covenant other than by adoption. So, if you were not originally of the bloodline of the 12 tribes of Israel, then you would have to be out of the Gentile nations adopted in. And therefore, it is important for you to understand that this is under the spirit of adoption. As it would be in a normal adoption, where someone would be adopted by a parent who was not basically their birth parent physically. But spiritually, they know they've actually looked after that child by spirit. To look after that child in a manner to make sure that all its necessities and cares uh, were taken care of. In this situation here, we have to take it into the same thought or we will not understand the scripture. It says in verse 6, And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his Son, into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. How about then, when we knew not God, ye did service unto them, which by nature are no gods? Which could kind of, if you look at the scripture, how this is written in uh, verse 8, and especially verse 7, dealing with the fact that uh, we're an heir through Jesus Christ, which would be through our Christian name. And then on top of it, verse 8 says that how about then when ye knew not God, if you did not know God, then you would not have this, this inheritance. Ye did service unto them, which by nature are no gods. Well, didn't Adam and Eve believe they were gods for a moment when they left the covenant or the protection of God? Because God was basically protecting them in that Garden of Eden. They were in the public. They were naked. They were not under cover of law, color of law. And therefore, God was looking after all their essentials. So therefore, they were not thinking they were gods until they sinned. And then they had walked down the journey of not being under the guardianship of the public and the trust of God. Further it says, And now, after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and the beggarly elements, whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? Ye observe days and months and times and years. I am afraid of you, 
lest I have bestowed up upon you, la you labor in vain. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am as ye are. Ye have not injured me at all. Ye know how through infir infirmity of the flesh I have preached the gospel unto you at the first. And my temptation, which was in my flesh, ye despised not, nor inject, rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Where is then the blessedness ye spake of? For I bear you record, that if it had been possible, ye would have plucked out your own eyes, and have given them to me. Am I therefore become your enemy, because I tell you the truth? They zealously affect you, but not well. Ye, they would exclude you, and ye might affect them. But it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing, and not only when I am present with you. My little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. I desire to be present with you now, and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt of you. Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondsmaid, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondswoman was born after the flesh. But he of the free woman was, was by promise. Which things are an allegory, for these are the two covenants, the one from the Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar. And this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children, which would be like today. The democratic system of Jerusalem has nothing to do with those that are of the spiritual free, according to the covenant we're talking about. So we read further. For this agar is Mount Sinai, Arabia, and answers to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. The Jerusalem which is of above is free, which is the mother of us all. It's new Jerusalem. The Jerusalem of above. For we know that the, even the seed of Abraham in the beginning were seeking a better country. They were pilgrims. They were temporary residents. They did not believe that their inheritance was only in the temporary. They knew it was to come. And therefore, whatever they had was based on a jurisdiction of faith. For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren and bearest not. Bring forth and cry, thou that travailest not. For the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the Spirit. The Spirit in capital letters as we notice here. Even so it is now. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture? Cast out the bondswoman and her son. For the son of the bondswoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondswoman, but of the free. Now, if you're under the bondage of sin under the social insurance program, then you're under being surety for yourself, trying to claim you were a god, just as it was on the original sin of Adam and Eve. This is blasphemous. You may believe otherwise. But you will find out shortly that you'll be paying for your own sin because Christ will not be there for you because you've neg neglected his sacrifice. Because everything is done, Everything is already written, and everything is already placed for you. Your inheritance is already involved in your birth inheritance, which is even recognized by the state, the state of mankind, as what they would have given you. Therefore, there is a division between the two jurisdictions, those under the bond and those under the free. If you wish to be under the Christian inheritance, well, then you come to your inheritance. If you want to be under those under the bondswoman, then you will understand that you are a part of those that rejected the ransom sacrifice of Jesus Christ and therefore have gone down a journey that would make themselves their own surety in the matters. 
And Satan could only deceive those that would believe that they could be their own gods. And that's what our society has become, democracy. So anybody who claims that they're a civilian in this world are already part of those that are not peacemakers. That are those that are actually taking on their own surety position. Because no one could back this up other than themselves. And therefore they're not coming forward as heirs under the covenant that was promised to Abraham and those that were under his seed and those of the nations that would be blessed because they've taken on a position that is blasphemous to that remedy, to that inheritance, to that covenant. And we hope that those that understand this and read this will see that we're on the moment of going through accepting the proper surety, which is Jesus Christ, and not the false surety of Satan, which is under the pagans. Because one will give you life, one will take your life.